and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today we are the last stop on the book blog tour for Worlds Within Worlds by Kirby Rosanne. So this is his latest book. It doesn't have any ties to his previous Morphia series. It's uh, kind of its own thing. It's not tied in in any way. We don't have any of the little creatures, the Morphia creatures that we saw in the previous books, which is an improvement in my opinion. I love Kirby's books, as you'll know from my previous reviews. But the little creatures, the little doodle creatures, I think they were starting to get a little bit uh, samey. Even though his illustrations are all fantastic, I'm so glad that he's now doing things that don't incorporate millions of these little tiny doodles. And I know a lot of you will agree. Um, so yes, this is a standalone book. I don't know whether it will be part of a series going forward. I hope so. I'd love to see more in this style from Kirby, uh, but we don't know for sure yet. So I have to say that Mythomorphia was always my absolute favourite Kirby book. Uh, even after he bought out the, the two after Mythomorphia, it remained my firm favourite. And this one has completely surpassed it, which I never thought it could do. I really, really loved Mythomorphia. But this is definitely now my most favourite Kirby book um, of them all. So let's get on with it and have a look inside. Now you might have seen the book already on previous stops on the book blog tour. I know that Colour and Chat with Sammy did a video for it and a few others as well. So uh, this is the last stop because it's release day today and I'll give you details of that at the end of the video. So the book is exactly the same size, shape, format as the Morphia books. It's 96 pages long, which is the same, and it's the same square size, shape, format. Uh, the cover itself has this really nice glossy detailing to the illustration, but the back of it, the background, is a black matte soft touch finish. It's really, really nice to hold in your hands. And the back is the same as well. You've got this glossy illustration and then the matte texture around it. So we open up and first thing we can see is the illustration from the front cover but this time it's rendered in line art so that you can colour it as it is and that's on the title page Worlds Within Worlds. Then as usual with Kirby's books we have a uh, illustrated by and books belong to spread which you can colour. You can see that none of the pages in this book have been wasted on extraneous information or anything like that. Uh, everything, even the copyright pages and things, have an awful lot of detail for you to colour, so you can really make this book your own. So that's the uh, Belongs To spread. We then have that copyright information here, which as you can see is surrounded by a, a sea life type of illustration. And then we have a little bit of information about the book. So Kirby's books are really well known for having the hide and seek element within them, and this one is no different. Now, the thing is that you don't really know what it is you're looking for, which is a bit odd. Um, each illustration unlocks the next. So that's the theme of the book. But you have to find something within that illustration that pertains to the next one to unlock it. Let me just uh, show you what I mean. It's going to be a lot easier for me to actually show you. So I'm going to flick just quickly to the answers at the back of the book. And uh, we see here that the first illustration is this dinosaur. And the answer for this one is the moon, which you'll find within the tree. The answer is the moon because the next illustration is of the moon. And then within this moon, you'll find a little tortoise. And that's the next illustration. And that's how it goes. So each illustration has a hidden element that um, unlocks the next or it gives you a clue as to what the next one is going to be. So first illustration, we're straight into it. This is a double spread uh, image. It's, as you can see, it's a dinosaur. But the thing about this book is, with it being called Worlds Within Worlds, it integrates two different things together. It integrates reality with fantasy, which is just, again, it's very similar to what Mythomorphia did. Um, but this is totally different because we're seeing everyday uh, objects and places and things mixed in with more um, fantastical sort of subject matter so as you can see we've got a dinosaur here and these type of dinosaurs can't remember what they're called but they usually have um, spikes or pegs across the back and as you can see those spikes and pegs have been replaced with the roofs of houses so that's what I mean by the book integrates the two different things together and it really really works it's so effective and it's really fun as well and you can see right up the tail of the dinosaur, we even have things like pylons and telephone poles and, and things like that. So it's, it's a city or a village or a street on the back of a dinosaur. 
So again, you wouldn't have seen this. Dinosaurs didn't exist at the same time as humans, obviously. Um, so, it, you know, it's just, it's really fun and it's, it's fantastic. So we've got a couple of standalone pages next. You can see this one here is the one that was on the back um, cover. And this is the moon. So we see all these beautiful jagged craters, almost, well, it's, the moon is a rock, isn't it? But it's very kind of uh, rough and stone-like rather than a smooth moon. Um, and it has this beautiful lush green, well, it will be green, maybe it'll be green, forest growing within the moon. So you're bringing land and sky together. This one is one of my absolute favourites and I saw this on social media, you know, when it was being promoted and straight away I thought that's the one I'm going to colour for the for the review, you know, the first one. Uh, it ended up that I didn't, I coloured something a little bit <clears throat> later on, and uh, but it still remains one of my favourites. As you can see, it's because it's got a haunted house on it and you know what I'm like for my scary stuff. But I really love how it's, it's sort of this old, craggy, um, almost dinosaur-like Galapagos um, turtle or is it galapagos tortoise or turtle i think it's a tortoise isn't it that's the land one <laughs> um need to watch a bit more david attenborough i think um and it is you know it's it's that dilapidated haunted house so you could almost call it dilapidated galapagos <laughs> if you haven't been drinking um so yeah this is one i really really enjoy we've got this really creepy scary broken down house on the back of this tortoise and that is his shell so yeah again that integration this is another fantastic one and to be honest with you I don't think there's any duds throughout the whole book um I love them all and I can imagine coloring them all um so yeah it's, it's fantastic but this one is great so you can see we've got this skull um and inside it we've got the the ocean but underneath within the skull's eye sockets nose uh, you can see the underwater creatures like the manta rays and the fish and the coral um all underneath the water but on the top in the uh, in the cranium you can see we've got all of the ocean waves and this huge beautiful viking longship just sailing along in this um in this skull and again it's just that imagination isn't it i do not know where kirby gets his uh, his inspiration from but he must have the most incredible imagination so yeah, I love it. Uh, this one, we're inside of a tree. So usually you would see these um, these holes in trees and you might see a little owl poking out if you're lucky. Or you might even spot a duck like I did one day. Uh, I got into the newspaper. <laughs> but this time in Kirby's book, uh, you can see that he has created this really extravagant um, uh, set of buildings. It almost looks like the London skyline. So you've got all of these gorgeous towers and uh, roofs and there's even a statue in there and all sorts of things um, within this tiny little tree hollow. Here we've got a double page spread as you can see and this is an asteroid or a meteorite coming down to Earth, passing by the other planets and this is probably what I would say is most similar to his previous work because there is a lot of tiny little bits that are coming off of the meteorite but these bits are bits of coral um all sorts of anemone and, and and bits like that that you would find in the ocean and as you can see we've got some coral and things embedded within the meteorite as well so it's almost like it's coming from the ocean of another planet now the one thing that i need to mention about this because it's a problem in most of kirby's books is the binding so as you can probably um tell from experience if you've had Kirby's previous books and as you can see from this it's very very difficult to get into the center of this binding very difficult indeed uh, it's not the kind of binding that you can break properly um, and you really have to push it down and try and get into the into the center there and, it, and it's still kind of impossible to get those tiny details which is a massive shame it'd be nice if he'd have done something or the publishers or whoever would have done something where uh, very similar to Joanna Basford in her Ivy book where she um, just cropped the images so that they left this really small narrow border in the centre and they still looked like it was one whole image but you did have that narrow section in the centre that you didn't have to worry about so that might be something to think about maybe for the next book if the publishers are watching. Um, so that's that one. We've got another double page spread here absolutely fantastic so we've seen Kirby draw dragons multiple times and there's a few things in this book scattered around that you will have um 
not necessarily, it's not the exact same drawing, but you will have seen Kirby uh, tackle that particular animal or subject in his previous books, but always in different ways. So as you can see here, the way that the worlds have been integrated is that we've got this gorgeous sea dragon um, integrated with these leaning Tower of Pisas. So each sort of hump, uh, if you will, is is a tower and the architecture in the background as well. It's just and the, the waves. This is going to be absolutely gorgeous when it's done i can't wait to see somebody tackle this whole spread i don't think it's going to be me quite yet it's slightly too daunting um at the moment but i can just imagine it being fantastic you can see here we've got little um we've got someone in a, in a boat you know going in the wind the waves are crashing i don't know how she's managed not to capsize uh, but anyway so we've got a couple of uh, standalone pages again so it's it's kind of um backward and forward throughout the book as to whether it's a double page or a single page spread uh, this one here is now then you know what i'm like for birds and basically any type of species identification um i'm gonna say it's a stalk maybe because it looks like there are other stalks around um <laughs> and so as you can see we've got this beautiful japanese kind of architecture going on uh, and growing out of the back of the stalk there's a little um lady in the little chinese try is it chinese or japanese i do get mixed up again not trying to uh you know insult anybody um but i just get mixed up because i that's what i'm like but we've got this little lady she's got the uh the triangular hat on the traditional wear and again you've got these little um just beautiful little bits of housing and and pagodas and things just integrated into the back of the stalk and obviously he's in the sky because he's up again the clouds uh this one's gorgeous and i think i've seen this done already and it absolutely blew my mind i can't remember who did it but it was gorgeous so we've got again this is like, kind of like the taj mahal uh embedded into this dragon's eye and the scales are just gorgeous in fact this would be a really really good one to practice uh, my snakeskin tutorial that i did not too long ago on the channel because uh, you've got these very defined scales to do that in um but it's it's another beautiful illustration and you know if you use some white gel pen over this when you've colored it to really bring out the the glassiness of the eye it just it just pops it's gorgeous so another double page spread this one is an open book so this one basically is um is what this book is in in pictorial format so you open the book and it's all these different worlds um you know just bursting out of the page and that's what this is representing this is like um a traditional versus like hyper contemporary illustration i think so you've got the traditional book with its pages and its binding and then you've got this kind of metropolis of um pipes and and buildings and structure and um industrial and in, industry and, and all this stuff you know what i mean now we've got an underwater sort of uh utopia here so this makes me think of those lands that they say exist underwater or that they were um they were drowned by water um a long long time ago i'm trying to think i know it begins with a there's a greek one isn't there um this underwater with the towers and the plinths and everything you'll be screaming at me right now <laughs> um but yeah this is kind of like what that reminds me of so you can see that all the fish and the the plant life and the marine life has totally taken over the structures that have been left behind um i'm still trying to think of that word uh you can see that all of the um plinths and things and the towers and the pillars have been completely covered in plant life marine life coral and it's just absolutely heaving with life down here, isn't it? We've got sharks, we've got eels, um, rays and, and fish and all sorts of things. Yeah, still can't think of it. Um, next, we've got some form of um, caribou or gazelle or something like that. Anyway, I'm sure, again, you'll know. But again, it could actually be some mystical creature that Kirby's put a hybrid together i don't know if it even exists <laughs> that's me trying to get out of knowing what it's called but you can see within the horns and the antlers is a really cute little kind of shanty town village um all with thatched roofs and very sort of jumbled and put together hastily um and it's really really nice i love the frame of flowers as well it's almost like this creature is emerging from the depths of the wilderness we've got a snow globe here with a really really sweet little scene uh, within it 
My favourite thing about it, though, isn't what's going on in the snow globe with the Sakura Blossom, Cherry Blossom. It's very, you know, um, Japanese orientated. But my favourite thing about it is the actual base of the snow globe because you can see this beautifully intricate fleur de lis um, engraved pattern which also has a dragon across it. And I can imagine that looking amazing with some gold metallic paint. Another double spread. This one is something similar that you will have seen um, from Kirby before. So he has done these squid octopus type of illustrations. But this one, as you can see, um, all of the little suckers on the octopus's octopi's um, tentacles, all the suckers have been replaced by little huts. So little mud huts. Um, and again, it's just that amazing imagination that Kirby has to have collaborated those two things together. So um, yeah, just another fantastic one. And you can see that some of the little huts have their own tiny weeny little tentacles. Maybe they'll grow one day into this huge daddy octopus, who knows. So here we've got a, a more simple one. So if you're looking for something quick to colour and you don't want to really get into a whole scene uh, with a lot of detail, you can colour this compass. Um, around the compass there's all kinds of different freaky ass creatures so um, it looks like something out of a sci-fi horror film you know all the different things um, this is some sort of crab like thing with claws and oh, it's just really really odd but it's kind of what you would imagine finding in the deep deep depths of the ocean this one is fantastic um, they all are so we're in a library we've got the bookshelf and the bookshelf has just turned into this huge waterfall and the books are actually floating down as you can see they're floating down from the shelf down the waterfall and then creating this gorgeous little lake at the bottom where the, we've got a, a cruise ship with people stood on it um and it's just it's just i don't know where he gets his ideas from i really really don't but this is again going to look fantastic when it's done the rushing of the water and the the foam at the bottom as well this is another really, really good one. Um, camel. So I think we've seen camels before in Kirby's work with the humps and everything. But this time the humps are volcanoes. Just what can you say? I'm just I'm a bit sort of overwhelmed by the amount of fantastic ideas and the way that he's put these the two things together, the animal and the habitat um, and the different places. It's just really, really good. So again, going to look fantastic when it's done. I really like how this is in water as well, because you can see the camel's kind of shaggy hair floating around in the water, and it's going to have that that double um, habitat look to it as well. So we've got a couple of hands here holding some different structures, completely different. So this one is almost like the stalagmite stalactites that you would find in a cave structure. Um, and as you can see, they're all the rocks are all dripping down from the top, growing up from the bottom and also dripping down from and growing from the hand as well. So it's that organic integration again. Um, this one is very much a lush forest. So you can imagine this being a jungle um, with all of these really gnarly, big, thick rooted trees. And you've got vines and things growing again down from the hand. This is another metropolis, a city skyline, as you can see, and uh, the things that have been integrated in this one, we've got a, a bridge and it's going over this, this lake or this sea or this body of water. And uh, if you can just imagine all of these massive, huge, heavy skyscrapers um, just being sat on top of a very delicate looking, rather scarily delicate looking bridge. So this one is more of a space orientated one, but I really love it because it's going to be a massive challenge to recreate the the soapiness of the bubbles. Now, whether you can see this at first glance or not, I don't know. But this here, this is actually a bubble blower and the bubble is being blown out of each one of them. And inside, <clears throat> excuse me, are these little tiny dioramas of worlds. You've got the skyline, you've got the jungle, you've got the space, you've got the sea. And they're all within these bubbles. This is, again, it's going to be amazing when it's done. So we've got the guy from the front cover. Again, this is as a full page this time. So if you didn't want to colour him as a smaller illustration with the title, you can colour him on his own larger. And again, um, we've also got the Sphinx Cat. So these both go together really well because they are four-legged animals that have these Inca, Aztec and Egyptian buildings sort of inbuilt into their backs egyptian obviously because it's a cat 
Inca, the forest, uh, you know, the woods and things with being a monkey. Um, yeah, again, just two other pieces that are going to be fantastic coloured. I can I can visualise it all now. Very Egyptian colours, gemstone colours, lots of sand and, and ochres and things. In this one, lots of green, lots of stone. Fantastic. This is great as well. We've got an apple core that's obviously just about to um, fall off the branch. It's rotted down to the centre, but it's growing its own apple trees within itself. This one's great as well because you've integrated the, the hedgehog, which is a very spiky looking fella, with a really spiky looking plant, which is obviously the cactus. So you've got this whole desert. They've even got the mountains, the desert mountains in the background as well. A um, couple of vultures circling round up there and uh, yeah brilliant these are gorgeous as well <laughs> um a couple of crowns we've got the queen's and the king's crown and again just like similar to the skull that we saw at the start of the book it integrates the the ocean and ships within both crowns so we've got another dragon here this is more of a chinese looking dragon um, again you've got the scales to be practicing your snake skin tutorial on but the integration here is fantastic. We've got these little um, archways that make up the whole back of the dragon all the way around. And you can see somebody's just about to walk the bridge through the archways over the dragon. Here, again, we'll have seen these before in Kirby's previous books. He's often done these uh, noctilus, I think they're called noctilus shells or shrimp shells, something like that. He's done things like this before, but not in this way, where you can see that these, um, these structures are growing out of the shell. And again, it's an underwater thing. We've got some mermaids, mermen and whales around there. Here we've got some mushrooms. And at the top of this mushroom is this absolutely stunning, very Indian looking um building and structure on top it's even got little trees little conifer trees and a little statue um fantastic this one is a, a lantern it looks like it's come from an arabian street market or something like that we've got all the different pots and pans and other little flea market bits around it something that you might just walk past in a marrakesh market um but again within the actual lantern itself we've got a tiny little habitat of penguins all stood huddled together on the top of this iceberg and some uh, sea lions floating around underneath it as well. This one is like some glass ornaments that you might hang on your Christmas tree or I think more commonly nowadays it's, it's a bit of a trend to have these glass things hanging from your ceiling and that now isn't it? Um, and again they've all got little worlds within them so this one it kind of reminds me of kind of Holland with the all the different um, windmills and, and the different structures within them We've got some succulent plants as well and some hanging plants this one's fantastic too it's a doll's house as you can see but it's actually the home of all of these different uh, magical creatures so we've got trolls and ogres in one we've got in one room we've got some sorcerers and witches in another room down here we've just got what looks to be a bit of a normal family but then again they do have slightly pointed ears and a long nose so maybe pixies We've got gnomes up here running around causing havoc. We've got little fairies and we've got the unicorn down here in this room. This one's fantastic again because it's it's these tiny little creatures, tiny weeny little creatures that wouldn't be able to fit a pin on the back of them. And yet you've got these, these huge structures on the back. So these ones are all different ships with all different sails and people stood upon them and the bees or the wasps are trans transported everybody from place to place via the sky rather than the sea. So here we've got a flower that's opened up to reveal a wonderful fun fair. We've got the Ferris wheel, we've got the um, Helter Skelter, there's a roller coaster around here, we've got the ticket booths and all of the different um, sideshow attractions. Double page spread again where I'm talking about little tiny creatures that can't you know hold these things and they do in this world but you know ants are really strong aren't they they can carry like what like 10 times their body weight anyway these ants are carrying um leaves that have beautifully intricate structures on top from stone castles to these um stilted structures and big um kind of grecian looking buildings as well 
We've then got a couple of fish, again, something similar to what you'll have seen in his previous books. These kind of like Siamese fighting fish with the huge long tails, uh, but people are actually surfing on the tails. So rather than them actually being just a fish tail, they are being turned into waves and crests that surfers are surfing on. So we've got a couple of rabbits back to back here and as you would find with a rabbit warren or a rabbit hole, it will go underground and there'll be lots of different larger and smaller narrower spaces that the rabbit navigates through underground. And that's what is within the two rabbits on here. So different structures. But instead of um, the rabbit living within the human's world, there are humans taking a bath, uh, eating the dinner, living within the rabbit. So it's flipped that on its head. So here we've got a sloth just hanging on the tree, but hanging is the theme of this illustration because as you can see we've got little houses just hanging from the sloth coming from his um all of his long shaggy fur and just hanging down like chinese lanterns here we've got what looks to be a hermit crab um so it's got its own shell but on top of the shell is a beautiful beautiful jungle scape so you've got these palm trees you've got the mountains in the background you've got the little teepee tent and all the rock structures and all of the, you can imagine all of the greenery on there. We've even got a little tire swing hanging from one of the palm trees. So this is a double page spread of a couple of whales. These whales are actually emerging from the sea, but the sea is contained within these beautiful lilies. So again, incorporating what is normally a, a water flower, the lily, but incorporating it with an ocean being. And you can see in these little ones that haven't quite opened up yet, these little buds, we have these little baby ones, baby whales waiting to emerge. So this one, again, we're harking back to a little bit of, um, well, it could be a little bit of Holland. It could be just an American rural farm landscape, really, couldn't it, with the barns and the silos and stuff. But if you kind of take a look at the bigger picture, you can see that we've got some very Egyptian looking um, imagery down here. So I don't know what you would call this. Is it like Anubis or the Egyptian gods? You can imagine colouring these in metallic, shiny gemstone colours. Um, and all of the illustration around it as well. We've got the cobra snakes. So I don't really know how those two go together, what the connection is there with the, with the farm rural landscape and the Egyptian um, gods, but maybe you guys know. Um, this is another fantastic one. So we've got a cobra following on from the previous illustration, but the cobra halfway down turns into a, a subway or a train. And you can see people are getting on and off at the different stops. And it's one of the better, one of the, probably one of my favorite um, integrations in the whole book. This one, again, we're integrating space and land. Um, you can see we've got the astronaut's helmet. He's in the middle of space. We've got the planets behind him. But in the view of his helmet and what he's looking at is this gorgeous sort of Inca looking pyramid uh, with a few llamas on top, I think. I think that's what they are. Um, so maybe he's found this lush new planet and he's discovering it for the first time. Here we've got a couple of stags and those two stags or creatures rooting at each other and meeting in the middle of the book is another one of Kirby's signature styles for his uh, previous work. Um, again, not exactly the same, but a similar sort of thing that he does. And again, they've got all the uh, castles and things on their backs. Here we've got three candles that are melting down, but the candles themselves are made out of these tower-like structures very Grecian um, structures with the pillars and things. And there are people here with camels and visiting all the insides of the structure, but it is, you know, just a huge candle at the end of the day. It's, it's incredible. Uh, this one is a little bit more detailed. So we've got what looks like a, a crystal ball here and there's loads of different items. We've got, um, we've got tablets with things carved into them. We've got Roman um, war armor we've got um scrolls and hourglasses and things like that and then in the background we've got a lot of steampunk work going on so a lot of cogs and wheels and things but then in the background of that it looks like we're in space we've got the space station and the planets so make of that one what you will here we've got a cuckoo clock with loads of different things growing out of it. So if you can imagine um, the cuckoo, the bird in the tree, the cuckoo clock has been integrated with the tree. So we've got all the leaves and things, the branches gnarling out from it. And then in the middle of the cuckoo clock is a little village. Here we've got a lion. Again, Kirby's quite um, 
known for his face on large animal portraits and this is no different but the lion's mane this time isn't made out of uh, doodles or it isn't made out of hair or fur it's made out of a gorgeous forest scape and it even has a little waterfall coming from his chin which is cute this one's a bit different because it doesn't incorporate any animals we're incorporating inanimate objects so we've got the russian doll family and each one has a different uh, habitat within it so this one is an eagle or bird large bird of prey and uh, it's mixing again the modern and the kind of oldie worldy style you've got all the mountains in the background it looks very uh, desert like and barren and yet here we've got this cityscape with kind of matrix looking computer um computer sort of patterns on it um and then you know this i don't know what is what this is it's a lot of pipes and sci-fi looking stuff science fiction looking stuff so yeah and the bird is just gripping that and he's bringing it wherever so you can see that this is the one i've colored now i was really really happy with it up until up to a point which is what i always do when i'm coloring water and i always go too far um, and i ended up just covering it with way too much acrylic and you know i'm just not happy with it whatsoever but i really do like how the sky turned out it's very similar to the book that uh, the image that i did from magical jungle um by johanna basford the only thing that i'm noticing at this moment in time and i didn't see before is that some of my birds that i drew on have bled um, and that's because i used a fixative on it i sprayed a fixative on it last night and left it and i've only just opened it now to do the review and obviously the fixative has made the little bits of ink bleed but I'm sure I can sort that out. Anyway, I did the background, um, the sunset with Neo Colour crayons and everything else with Prismacolor. And as I say, I just did a wash of acrylic paint over that. So, yeah, love it. And you can see that the uh, flamingo's legs are turning into the turrets for the castles underneath the water. So here we've got a couple of dinosaurs. Again, the flying type. I can't remember what they're called. No, I can't remember what they're called, but the wings of the dinosaurs have these gorgeous space scapes within them. So solar systems within the wings of the dinosaurs. This is another one that really reminds me of Kirby's older work, the cheetah running across the frame. Um, but as you can see, we've got all of these people releasing these gorgeous Chinese lanterns off of the back of the cheetah at night time. Uh, this is going to be a really... Um, a really intimidating one to do i think especially if you follow all the different light sources and you're making this a nighttime scene as well um so i'd like to see that done we've got a bird cage here but within the bird cage are these tiny weeny little unicorns um just within these rather fantastical looking crystals at the bottom maybe crystal clusters uh, made of glass colored glass it depends how you want to do it and the rainbow is the bridge over from the cage to um to being free to freedom so again the two creatures coming to butt heads in the middle this time we've got the rams and on the back of the rams we have some mountains um and then you know you can see this mountainous desert terrain as well at the bottom with the cacti and things so it all ties in this is another one that i thought i was going to end up doing for this review um but i went with the the flamingos because i kind of wanted to do a bit of an exotic palette i didn't want to do anything um that i've been doing recently so fantastic you've got the two sneakers they look really old they look like they've just been chucked on the ground outside and left to rot but actually we've got some really gorgeous habitats growing out of them here it kind of looks like little sushi restaurants that are growing within them we've got a little bicycle parked outside and you know little bits of food that you can buy and things like that and obviously the houses in the top of the shoe as well it's just brilliant so then we've got um, all of the answers to the different things that you would find within the book. So this bit here is a very, very intricate illustration with lots of hieroglyphs in the centre. And we've got bits from all throughout the book. We've got the dragon, we've got the steampunk, we've got the city skyline, we've got the unicorn and different bits put together. So the answers are all here, which I'm not going to linger on, but they do tell you where to find each different key. And then that's the end of the book. So you can see here all of his previous books that you can get your hands on if you haven't already. And that's it. That's the book. It's absolutely stunning. As you can see, I'm in love with it. And um, 
you can just see the value that you're getting within this book within every Kirby book really but specifically this one I don't know why it doesn't have all the little doodles and it just everything that's that's on there looks like it needs to be on there if that makes any sense at all. Um, so prices and availability. As I've said, today is the release date for the book. So you can get it from today from the UK on Amazon, which is £7.19 at this current time. You can also buy it on um, Amazon US, but it won't be coming out until March the 17th. So you can pre-order it if you want, or if you want to get your hands on it right now, you can order it from Book Depository for £13.25 and they have free worldwide delivery. So it's up to you, you guys in the US, whether you want to wait for March and get it from Amazon or buy it now from Book Depot. Either way, all the links are in the description below. But this is definitely a book that I can get behind. It is absolutely wonderful and Kirby's just knocked it out of the park. So any other questions, please do ask. Let me know what you think of the book in the comments. Click the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.